So the title of my presentation is The Emperor's New Climate. So the, the story of the emperor's new clothes was a wonderful story about people blindly believing authority. There were, there were three experts in the kingdom who said that the king was wearing fine new clothes. And nobody else could see them. Um, and the king himself felt like he was not qualified to question these experts. And certainly the people who were working for the king didn't feel like they were qualified to question it. And the, the subjects in the kingdom, none of them believed that they were qualified either. So we went on with, everybody's looking at the king, everybody's seeing him naked, but they would say, well, we've got these three top experts, 97% of the clothing experts in the kingdom, said that the king was wearing fine new clothes when in fact he was completely naked. Next, please. And so this sort of leads into a great, one of my favorite quotes from Galileo. In questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. And in the case of the emperor's new clothes, who was that single individual? It was the small child who called out, the king's not wearing any clothes, right? Next. Okay, so th this is uh, a great um, newspaper article from the Brisbane Courier from 145 years ago titled, Imaginary Changes of Climate. And basically it's making fun of all the you know, hysteria in the press and everybody else who constantly thinks the climate is changing and all kinds of horrible things are happening. And, and this is a great quote from the article. Every season is sure to be extraordinary. Almost every month, one of the wettest, driest or wettest, windiest, coldest, hottest, you know, whatever. Everything was always the worst it ever was. And it's as much observation which ought to correct a tendency to exaggerate seems in some minds to have rather a tendency to increase it. And that's exactly what we hear now, right? Every month we hear, ah, oh, this is the most hottest, driest, wettest, whatever month ever in the history of the climate. So this is not a new problem. People, um, it, it, it's a problem that's been affl afflicting people, and particularly people in the press, for a very long time. They want to report something historical. So yeah, this was the hottest month ever. This was the driest month ever. And this, this is a, an article from 1863, I believe, from the Empire in Sydney, detailing the dr history of droughts and floods going back to the 1780s. And, um, you know, as you can see, this is normal weather in Australia. You have droughts, then it switches to floods, and drought, flood, drought, flood. And, and I'm sure that every time you go through a long period, very dry period, or a long wet period, there's people who come to believe this is permanent. It's always going to be like this. We, we don't remember anything else. And then it switches back, and they switch their position. Well, now we're in flood all the time. Uh, but, but this is just normal weather. This is how climate works. Next. Okay, and this, I, I threw this slide in today because of uh, Senator Roberts talking about no empirical evidence. This is a graph that were published in the 1990 UN IPCC report, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And what it shows is, what I've highlighted in red is the recent warming, what was currently blamed on global warming. You'll notice that over a period of 10,000 years, it's almost nothing. It's um, well, well within the natural variability. And over the last 1,000 years, once again, we see the same thing. The medieval warm period was much warmer. You know, they found Viking graves in Greenland that are pierced by trees in places where it's now the ground's completely frozen. So we know that it was very warm back during that period. But once again, the modern warming is well within the realm of natural variability. So we don't know what caused these, this warming in the past. And we certainly can't say that this warming is empirical evidence, because it certainly isn't. It's just, it's just noise in a long-term pattern of uh, natural climate change. Next. OK, this is more no empirical evidence. The blue lines represent um, actual measured troposphere temperatures from the satellite. Troposphere is the part of the atmosphere where we live. And the yellow is climate models. As you can see, the climate models have consistently overestimated warming. And we, we use models to develop policy, and these models have shown to not be very skillful in the past. So we're making, we're making policy based on models which are no good, and, call, and it's not empirical evidence. Next one. Okay, so now what really got me interested in, in the work that Senator Roberts doing was, was this guy here, um, BBC presenter, Brian Cox. Um, 
he comes and holds up this graph and says, I brought the graph. And, and then he implied that anyone who doesn't believe this means the end of the world is I'll probably also uh, believes that NASA never actually landed men on the moon. And that struck me as being rather remarkable because I happen to know some of the people who went to the moon. <laughs> and they have a very different opinion about this. So, next, please. So my, my senator from New Mexico at the time, uh, Harrison Schmidt, is the only scientist who ever walked on the moon. Uh, he's a Harvard PhD in geology, great guy. And he's a very well-known um, climate skeptic. So 100% of scientist moonwalkers agree with Senator Roberts and disagree with, with Brian Cox. <laughs> A unanimous consensus. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, and additionally, 49 of the top people from the Apollo program sent a letter to the NASA administrator saying, you guys have got to stop this. You know, we did a lot of good work for you. We made this rep we made gave this agency a great reputation. And you've got these people over at the Goddard Institute for Space Studies who are doing this garbage work. They're embarrassing the uh, the agency and we're ruining our reputation. So it, it was a great thing for prof for Professor Cox to do to bring this up because he was exactly on the wrong side of it. Next, please. Okay, so now the other half of that picture, Brian Cox, well, he's, he's obviously has a lot more hair than me, so he's got one big advantage than me. But um, he, he, he pointed this graph from NASA showing how temperatures have been going, you know, increasing steadily for the last hundred years or so. And um, this is something which I have a lot of expertise in. Um, I've been studying um, the history of government temperature graphs. So the US government climate lab is the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, where I live. Um, I ride my bike up there just about every day, great place. Um, and in 1974, they published this graph, which showed no warming from 1870 to 1970. You can see down there at the bottom, National Center for Atmospheric Research. And what's particularly interesting about this is that there was a lot of warming to about 1940, and then a very strong cooling where essentially all of the prior warming had been lost by 1970. Okay, next please. Okay, this is a very similar graph uh, put out by the U.S. National Academy of Sciences in 1975, you see the same pattern, a lot of warming in 1940, a lot of cooling, and temperatures in 1970 were no warmer than they were in um, 1880. Okay, next please. But now, if we look at the current NASA graph, I just took this off the NASA website a couple of days ago. The, the, I, I wanna make clear that I'm just talking about land temperatures in all of these graphs. This is the NASA land temperature graph. We no longer see that post-1940 cooling. It's disappeared. So we had NCAR, National Academy of Sciences, many other studies that were done 40 years ago showed cooling after 1940, but, some, but, but now NASA no longer shows any of this. And this is very troubling. Okay, and, and this one I've overlaid the National Academy of Sciences graph in black um, with the NASA graph in red. They're at identical scales on both axes. You can see how NASA has completely removed the post-1940 cooling. Next, please. All right. And this is one of my favorite climate gate emails from Tom Wigley to Phil Jones at CRU. It would be good to remove at least part of the 1940s blip, but we we're still left with why the blip. So they made a decision. They wanted to remove this blip here, this 1940s blip, and they didn't even have any reason to do it at the time. And this, okay, and this graph was 1981, a graph generated by James Hansen, and the red graph is their current um, NASA graph. Once again, these are the identical scale on both axes. So you can see how they've greatly cooled the past since 1981. And James Hansen was the guy who started this whole big climate scare. That was his black graph up there. So they've cooled temperatures substantially over the last 35 years. Next, please. Okay. In 1989, Tom Carl, who was the longtime head of NOAA's National Climatic Data Center in the United States, uh, he just retired a couple weeks ago. Um, he said that um, 
while global cooling actually warmed overall since 1881, it cooled from 1921 to 1979. And he said most, almost all of the warming occurred before 1919. And then there was this cooling from 1921 to 1979. Next, please. Now, on this, on this graph, I've drawn this line here showing the current NASA 1921 to 1979. They now show about 0.6 C warming during that same period when Tom Carl, who's also become a top alarmist, said that the Earth was cooling in 1989. Very troubling, once again. Okay, so did this post-1940 to 1970 cooling actually occur? Well, this was an article from the New York Times in 1961. It says, there was unanimous agreement among uh, assembly of specialists on climate change from uh, several continents that the Earth was cooling. So every single scientist who studied the problem in the 1960s believed that the Earth was cooling, and NASA no longer shows it cooling. Next, please. Okay, this was, this was um, in 1970, the U.S. and Russia, this was reported in the New York Times again, were very worried about why the Arctic was getting so cold. The ice was becoming ominously thicker. <laughs> and uh, whether this was going to lead to another ice age. So clearly, the Earth was cooling at this time. Okay, this was 1979. Noah said it was indisputable that the Earth had been cooling since World War II. Once again, this, all this cooling has been erased. Uh, the top guy, Noah, said um, that it had cooled down about a half a degree Celsius, which is what was seen in the NCAR graph and the National Academy of Sciences graph. And there we go again. Where's that cooling? It's gone now. It's no longer there in the NASA graph. I mean, anyone who's not troubled by this sort of change should be. Okay, so, so Gavin Schmidt um, conveniently put, these, put the, a tool up on his website, on the NASA website, where we can actually see the changes that have been made in different versions of uh, NASA graphs. So this is their 2000 version. They had about 0.5 C warming, which is represented by the, the red there. Okay, next please. This is the 2012 version. It's gone from 0.5 C warming up to 0.9 C warming. Next. Okay, and now they show about 1.4 C warming. So basically, NASA has tripled the total amount of global warming since the year 2000. Okay, so you might ask the question, um, well, maybe the Earth just warmed a lot since the year 2000. And once again, okay, the, the, this line here shows what satellites show has happened over land over the last 16 years. They show the temperatures have either been flat or they've declined slightly. And at the same time, NASA temperatures, land temperatures, show a very strong warming trend. There's this huge divergence. So we keep hearing about all these record temperatures we're having. Well, they're not being measured in the troposphere, and that's where the greenhouse effect occurs is in the troposphere, right? So I don't know, NASA's taking temperatures in parking lots or what, but, <laughs> but this warming is not occurring in the troposphere that, atmos that NASA's um, reporting. And if it's not occurring in the troposphere, it's not global warming, because that's what global warming theory depends on, is that tropospheric warming, not parking lot warming. Okay, my specialty, what I've really focused on mostly has been the U.S. temperature record. The U.S. has the best and most contiguous, um, most complete temperature record in the world. It's all available on the NOAA website. The blue line shows what their actual measured temperature date is. And as you can see, temperatures in the United States have actually cooled some over the last 80 to 90 years. But the red line is what they publish in their graphs. They show this strong warming trend during that time. The, the, the entire reason why the U.S., why NOAA shows a U.S. warming trend is because they've altered the data. And, you know, they don't dispute that they do this. Um, is, it, but what they don't do is, you know, they, they put out a graph of U.S. temperatures. What they don't do is they don't put a disclaimer on it saying, this data has been altered. The actual data says that we're cooling. All right, so they've got a, a group, a small group of people, of just, you know, a handful of people who have made this unilateral decision we're gonna ignore the actual data uh, which shows the US cooling. We're gonna turn it into a warming trend. I and mean, this is just not how we do science. 
and, it, and it's very deceptive. You know, they should at least, if they're going to do this, publish the raw temperature graph too, but they never do. You'll never see a raw temperature graph from NOAA. They're hiding this information from the American people. They're hiding it from our policy makers. And policy is being made based on data which is very, very dodgy and data techniques that are very dodgy. So it's quite upsetting to me. Okay, so this will, once again, going back to Tom Carl, who was head of the NCDC until a few weeks ago in 1989. U.S. data since 1895 failed to show warming trend. There was said that there's no significant change in the average temperature or rainfall in the United States over the past century, which means no climate change, right? So Noah was saying not that long ago there was no climate change in the United States, and now they show a lot of climate change during that period. Next. Okay, and this one I threw in, it's not just temperature data that's being altered. Okay, that, that bottom, this is sea level data here. You see the NASA 1982 line? That once again, that was James Hansen, you know, the world's top climate alarmist. He showed that sea level rise, this is global sea level rise, almost stopped after the year 1955. This blue line here is the current NASA CSIRO graph. NASA is now taking their data from CSIRO. And instead of showing sea level slowing down to almost nothing, they show it accelerating now. And the, the 1982 James Hansen graph showed one centimeter of sea level rise from 1955 to 1980. And now they're showing five centimeters of sea level rise. Sea level rise is not that hard a thing to measure. But what they've done is what the CSIRO guys and NASA guys have done. They've started cherry picking stations that are land that's subsiding. So the land's going down. And yeah, it looks like, it looks like sea level's going up. And NOAA, interestingly enough, shows much slower uh, rates and they don't, if you look at the NOAA graphs, NOAA has a very complete set of, U, of, temper, of uh, sea level graphs, you won't, I don't think you can find one single station which shows that sort of pattern in there. Okay, so this one here, I just want to uh, digress a little bit. This is going back to eight, an article from the Maitland Mercury from 1846 where the Aborigines were talking about huge amounts of climate change in uh, Australia and blaming it on other people for it. Okay, next. Okay, this is one, another one of my favorite articles from the US uh, Monthly Weather Review from 1907. It says, the misuse of meteorological data is a crime against the community, and it's up to the independent press, bloggers, I guess, to repress all climate cheats and hoaxes. And I've sort of, sort of seen that as been my role here. OK, so in summary of the first part here, Brian Cox held up a graph which has been massively altered. The people at NASA who, uh, who generated the graph had nothing to do with the moon landings. The people who did go to the moon disagree agree with Senator Roberts, not with Brian Cox. I'd say Brian Cox made a very clumsy appeal to authority and apparently did no research to back it up. You know, and history is not on the side of climate alarmists. 